Alrighty, welcome back. Uh, so today's video we're jumping right on into section 16, so uh, top wing skins. I already went ahead off camera and got the right wing prepped all the way up to the point of being ready to rivet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and on camera here knock out all of the left wing. Wanted to see if there's anything I can do to make my life easier on camera, hopefully have a more refined experience for you viewers out there versus me sitting there stumbling looking at instructions trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing. So anyways, right wing's all ready to go, looks great, looks ready to go, uh, but I definitely do have some tricks and tips I'll try to incorporate throughout the video here um, that I learned on that other one. So. Yeah, so anyways, we'll jump on uh, right on into things here. Alrighty, so I do have to do a voiceover here. Um, during the process of editing this video, my laptop has crashed several times, uh, which resulted in this clip here getting corrupted and then a few other sections of the video. Um, this one here, I wanted to just do a full voiceover. It was horrible. The ones later on in the video that you'll hear just sounds a little funky, uh, but apologize for that. <laughs> Spending a lot of time editing this video and uh, don't want to screw anything up. So voiceover real quick. What I'm talking about on camera is uh, basically just mentioning how I am kind of changing how I process things. Well, not really changing how I process material, but uh, processing uh, or I guess deburring ahead of time, even though it's not noted in the plans to do it right then and there. So this part here that I'm talking about on camera, it's a part that's sandwiched between uh, two other layers. So mentioning how I'm deburring the edges now ahead of time versus kind of running the risk of any scratching or anything like that down the line. I um, also mentioned how I had previously, while prepping the J-stiffeners or match showing them to the spar in a previous video, at the time went ahead and deburred each of those holes, deburred the edges, kind of made my life easier for my future self. So anyways, that's what I'm talking about here. Um, but on the topic of laptops, this thing is really old. It is really clunky. So if anyone has any recommendations for a good editing laptop or I guess work laptop that can handle uh, editing, please comment down below because I think I'll be on the market looking for one pretty soon here. Uh, but anyways, back to the normal course of the video. Enjoy the rest of the video with hopefully good sound. from the future. Um, I was just actually editing that video earlier today uh, that you saw. Um, currently at this stage here, you're not going to see in this video getting all the way up to uh, uh, to the stage of being mostly riveted. Um, reason being, I've spent a lot of time on the phone this last week with man, with uh, Van's builder support. Um, so full accountability uh, snippet here. I, I wouldn't say screwed up at this part here but I did not use nearly as much caution as I should have. So those of you out there who are getting to the point of click going on, then uh, dimpling your top skins to your rear spar, ribs and whatnot, take your time. Uh, this section here, I had a lot of tension in the skin. You probably saw me on camera somewhere there um, using my little orange pick, using it as like a little uh, like spud wrench out or whatever, um, getting things to line up. Um, I left too much tension in it. Um, it's easy with these final size kits um, to kind of get it, get it to go together and use that 
this pick here, get those Quicos in there. Being final size up until this point, it's never bit me in the butt not masterling or masterling a final size hole. Um, but what actually happened is this skin here, um, again, all of these holes are final size from Vance. Um, what happened is somehow my holes that are pre-punched on the skin, um, this rear hole to the forward hole, they're off by about a 32nd of an inch. So regardless of which way, when I went to fully assemble everything, regardless of which way I would start, I would end up with extra. So what happened now is uh, this one here, again, in this video, you're not gonna see me get up until this point, um, but this is hopefully to save other people out there. Uh, but what happened was while working this way, everything lines up absolutely perfectly along the top until these five uh, rear most, um, five rearward and inboard most holes. So those weren't lining up right. Uh, they were off slightly, which causes then the dimple to be off, which causes it to lift slightly away. So summed up, um, I had been going back and forth with Kevin at Vans Builder Support this whole past week here, stressing about possibly having to unrivet this entire wing here, which was fully done up until these here. Um, but anyways, after talking with Kevin, talking with Sterling at Vans, uh, Sterling walked me off the uh, off the cliff there um, and basically explained, hey, it's, it's no big deal to have a slight gap on these five poles here. It's not gonna cause any issues. So those of you out there, do not use my video as um, reasoning for you to veer from plans in any way whatsoever. This is, again, uh, voicing the the, um, the trials and tribulations of uh, my build. But if you're at this stage uh, right now of getting everything laid out, getting ready to dimple, please make sure you're fully lined up if you need to do any final drilling, um, do whatever you need to do for your plane, uh, but don't just push through. I had wrongfully assumed that I could, with final size here, uh, just go ahead and dimple and move forward. Because uh, again, the, the back end did not line up here, which I know now that it's not a big issue, uh, but I spent the whole last week um, in so much fear losing sleep, going everywhere, looking through all the forms, couldn't find any answers. Um, but again, summed up, I'm good to move forward. Uh, but this is after already losing sleep, after losing valuable time, uh, going back and forth, trying to figure out a solution. Um, but you can see I even, uh, when I was waiting to hear back, uh, cause this didn't, this made it past just a phone call. This was emails and photos and whatnot. Uh, but during the time being, I had actually drilled out, um, a lot of work that we did. I drilled out this entire length here and this entire length here, kind of with my assumption being that if, Hey, if I, if I had the extra skin up here, what if I could uh, kind of balance it between the two? Ends up I didn't have to do that, now I have more work because I have to go back through and make sure there are no shavings left behind, and it's gonna take a whole lot of work making sure that these are, are good to go again. Uh, so anyways, accountability post here, I know it's probably gonna bite me in the butt. Um, someone will probably comment saying, uh, you shoulda, coulda, woulda done this. Yes, I know, um, but um, hopefully this saves someone out there who has a final size kit or anyone else who's getting this step. Take your time, make sure everything lines up. Again, this whole wing is done. Uh, but then I've literally been tied up here for the last week. Yeah. Anyways, hopefully I saved someone out there who's near this step or anywhere else in the build. Uh, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes here. That's kind of the whole intention here that again, these videos are not how-to guides, uh, but hopefully it will help other people uh, from making silly mistakes like I made here. Uh, so anyways, I'll quit rambling. We'll get back to building and I'll get back to editing this video that you're watching. Good, how are you doing? Good, what are you doing? Okay, I'll be right back. All right, she just went inside to get changed, so I earned some time here, but what I wanted to get to real quick, uh, before I take these skins off, is uh, the elusive scarf joint. I know this is not elusive, uh, controversial scarf joint. Um, I know it's kind of a hot topic. I know some builders choose not to do it, some choose to do it, some say if you do it and you overdo it and you go to either dimple or, um, or edge form after the fact, you may induce a crack. I did it on the other skin and was pretty happy with it, so I am going to go ahead and do it again on this wing here, and hopefully I don't get any cracks. Uh, but uh, the way I'm doing it, the 10 plans, which I'll put on the screen somewhere here, uh, are really confusing to look at. Uh, in the RV10 wiki page, someone posted the RV14 plans, which makes way more sense uh, as far as what you're supposed to do. Anyways, what I'm doing is while I'm here, um, just marking where these skins overlap each other. That way I have an easy mark. Now I have an easy mark of how far I have to go with that scarf joint where I sand the material down uh, on the inside. I'm also marking where I'm going to sand. So if you notice, 
outboard wing skin is on top, so the in the uh, the inboard top skin gets sanded down here in a triangle. So that's going to go there, and then this one here, I'm all from here. I'll make a nicer triangle after the fact, uh, but just kind of putting a marker where uh, where the material is supposed to be sanded. The idea with the scarf joint is you get these two layers to sit just a little bit lower. Uh, my understanding from other people out there is you never really get it perfect, uh, but you just get it acceptable by just having a little bit lower of a uh, of interference up top there. So anyways, I'll be doing it. scratches out uh, when I go before uh, I will prime this so before priming I'll uh, hit, hit that again with scotch bright maybe a little bit finer grit sandpaper and get some of these some of those little surface scratches out um, yeah literally just two layers of uh, I think that was two layers of tape um, anyways just two layer of tape and one other layer on top which I had to replace every once in a while once it gets uh, lifted up by the file so anyways I'll replicate this over there uh, using masking tape get the same angle as this one same pattern and uh, we'll see how it works. Alrighty, moment of truth. Here's this 032. Sitting there as a skin well. Definitely better than before. I wouldn't call it totally flush, uh, but it's not sitting as proud as it was before. So I'll count that as a win, move on. Um, I'm not gonna remove any more material than that. I'm worried if I go any thinner, because I don't want it to uh, to crack when I go to manipulate that material later. So I'm gonna call it quits there and move on to dimpling, and uh, we'll be ready to rivet after dimpling. So a whole lot of dimpling here to do. Probably a good couple hours worth of work, and uh, we'll be ready for getting it put on for the last time. Alright, so this part here is done, um, but what I want to mention real quick here is in my last order from Creamy Aircraft Tools, I added in, I found these um, smaller diameter dimple dies. Uh, figured it would be useful to have in a tight spot, and sure enough, ended up in a tight spot here. So right next to the number eight uh, dimple that I previously did following the plans, um, that interferes with the standard size dimple dies. So hopefully you can see on camera, uh, but here's the standard size diameter one. You'll notice it would interfere and crush the side of the uh, number eight dimple. Uh, so the smaller diameter one uh, fits nicely and does not interfere with that already dimple number eight um, dimple. So anyways, super beneficial. Add this to the uh, list of tools that you may end up needing.
Alrighty, Austin from the future here. Uh, I'm sitting here editing this video. I'm realizing this is getting pretty dang long by now, 15 minutes in. Um, so anyways, voiceover here, um, what I was talking about here at the end. Uh, but I was basically explaining how I had uh, used little shims underneath the length of the spar just to kind of support it um, off of that table. You'll notice both sides of that spar um, on that reinforcement piece. Uh, the top side and the bottom side are different uh, measurements all the way down. You'll see they kind of step down along the way there. Um, so I wanted to make sure it was nice and flat the whole way down, fully supported. Um, I know when I was troubleshooting that issue with the gap at that inboard and rearward most portion on those five holes, um, that was a question that they asked, like, hey, did you make sure it was supported along the way? It was. Um, it was really nice and straight. Even I think it went through with the uh, uh, digital measuring gauge and actually made sure even left and right, I mean, in this view here, this camera, uh, left to right, that that was the same, uh, I guess, level all the way down the length of it. Not sure if it would have caused any kind of a twist in or anything, but just really erred on the side of caution here. Uh, but anyways, if you made it this far, um, thank you so much for watching. Next video, we'll actually be jumping into the riveting of this uh, wing here. Um, so a lot of the content here to go through. Uh, so sorry for the delays in videos. Uh, but anyways, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, feedback, questions, comments, concerns, or you just want to say hi, say hi down in the comments down below. And we'll see you in the next one. Adios.